Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, in this video, I want to talk to you about subwoofers, and in particular, three things that I need you to get right before actually investing in a sub. Yeah, Because maybe you're in this situation where you're not hearing the low end properly, or there's some imbalance there. Maybe you've done some measurements, you've seen some bad dips in the frequency response, or your speakers are just really small and you want some more low frequency extension, some more oomph from your system. And so now you're looking at different subwoofers, wondering if this is the time to take the plunge. And so I need you to make sure that it's actually the right decision. So these are the three things that I need you to get right before investing in a sub. Of course, if you're wondering what sub to get and where to place it, I made a two-part video series answering exactly those questions in collaboration with Head Audio a while back. I'll put those two videos in the link in the description for you. But with that, let me start off right away with the first thing that I need to get right, and that is obviously figuring out whether you need or want a subwoofer, aka whether your speakers really aren't giving you enough low end in the first place. And that means getting the low end from your speakers right, and that means making sure that you've got a good low frequency balance at your listening position, right? So if you are in this situation where you're getting a poor bass response, there's not enough punch, maybe there's not enough sub, but on paper your speakers should be giving you this, then that's an indication that you haven't set up correctly in your room. And I'm consciously not saying setting up your speakers because this is a question of the right listening position, right? Because a good low end balance is one where all the standing waves that get created in your room are roughly balanced against each other in a way to give you an overall even low end balance. And this is a question of your positioning in the room. I call these spots the low end sweet spot and there are usually only one or two in any room and you need to make sure that your listening position is placed in one of those because then if you set up your speakers correctly they will play energy into this standing wave pattern and that gets created in a, ba in a balanced way at your listening position and if you don't do that if you're located in the wrong spot in your room if you're not located in your room's low end sweet spot if you then get a sub and tie it into your system it's only going to push more energy into this imbalance and potentially make it even worse so it's not actually going to solve the problem right so you need to make sure first of all that you are positioned in the right spot that way you have the potential to hear what your speakers can actually do in the low end and then you can make an educated decision whether you actually need or want a sub now of course the question is how do you find that low end sweet spot in your room and you can do that with a bunch of measurements or with a whole lot of error, trial and error but in my opinion there's a much easier and quicker way a structured listening test that's why i developed the bass hunter technique it's basically a structured listening test that guides you through isolating the standing wave pattern in your room making sure it's kind of the worst it can be and then giving you a systematic way to test the locations in your room, the spots in your room where the low end is actually balanced. And you can get that completely for free at the link in the description, the free guide to my Bass Hunter technique, which walks you through this exact process of finding your room's low end sweet spot and then making sure that your listening position is placed there. Yeah, so this is something that I really, really recommend that you go through if you haven't done it already in order to make sure that you're really hearing the low end from your speakers properly so that you can make an educated decision of wh whether you actually need a sub or not. The second thing that I need you to get right is to go into this with the right mindset. And that is that the point of the sub isn't to fix low end issues. Obviously that kind of ties in with, with what I just said, but let's say you've found your low end sweet spot in your room. You've put your, you've placed your listening position there. You've set up your speakers correctly. So you know you're getting the best out of the speakers you can, but there are still a whole bunch of peaks and dips in the response. You're really hearing those holes. You're still hearing a lack of energy in certain frequency regions. And so now you're wondering whether the sub is the right tool to even those out. So in some cases, a subwoofer can help 
reducing dips in the frequency response. In particular, if they are caused by reflections. So uh, a typical example would be the floor reflection, and another one would be speaker boundary interference, which is also a type of reflection. And both of these can cause heavy and very deep narrow notches dips in the frequency response. But obviously this will only work if those dips are in a region that will be taken over, that will be covered by the sub. So usually anything below around 80 hertz. And in many cases, these effects are actually higher up in the spectrum. And in that case, the sub won't do you any good at all. And of course, most importantly, a sub can't actually counteract room modes in any way, right? It's just a matter of how much energy you're pushing into those room, those room modes. And so it can only basically make the effect of room modes stronger, which is why I want you to look at point one again, figuring out the spot in your room where those, uh, those standing waves balance are balanced against each other, because that's the only way that you can kind of put more energy into the system and still maintain a balanced low end. So a sub isn't the right tool to fix base issues, and in particular, if you don't know what's causing them, because in all likelihood, it's actually standing waves, and a sub won't help you with that. The point of a sub is to give you more low frequency extension, give you energy at lower frequencies than your speakers already reproduce, and to some extent also just to give you more power, right? So that is the reason why you would want to get a sub. Yeah? So be in that mindset, make sure you're thinking about it that way. It's not there to fix issues, it is there to complement your existing sound system and give you more low frequency extension. Now the third point is acoustic treatment. And this isn't as clear cut, right? So you can technically tie in a subwoofer into your system entirely correctly in an untreated room. And if you've done what I just said, if you've positioned yourself in your low end sweet spot and you've tied in your subwoofer correctly, then you will get a correct frequency response, a correct response from that entire setup to the capabilities that your room can reproduce these or it doesn't destroy it basically. Yeah, so it can be done, but in many cases, it's not particularly pretty. Yeah, so at a minimum, I would suggest that you have some basic treatment in the room to take care of some reflections, reduce the overall reverb time, just make the room less echoey, let's call it. Yeah, that's kind of the kind of minimum requirement, I would say, to have in place before you want to invest in a subwoofer just because it'll clean up the sound to some extent, even though the low end won't really be improved by this treatment, it is still something that overall will give you the benefit of better sound. And when you then tie in a subwoofer, it is much less confusing and much less overwhelming in terms of what's happening to the sound. Of course, ideally, I recommend you invest in proper low end control in your studio, even before you get a sub. Again, this kind of ties in with the, the, the two points I made before, because even if you've placed your listening position correctly, you've got a balanced low end, if the, the bass is completely untreated, you, will, you still will have very strong effects from standing waves. And the only way to reduce that is with actual low end control, proper bass trapping. Yeah? And only then will the benefit of the sub really shine. But since this is something you can very easily do Kind of once you've gotten the sub, made sure everything is set up correctly, it's tied in correctly, and you still find that the bass is basically too boomy and there's just too much going on, you can still then invest in bass trapping without any issues, right? So it's something that you can also kind of figure out once you've gotten the sub. One final point maybe, definitely don't think that you can somehow overwhelm the room or that for some reason, it's not a good idea to get a sub in a smaller room. Some people kind of advocate this point that it'll simply confuse you more than necessary. And if the room is too small, it somehow can't handle all those low frequency energies. Technically, this isn't true. And when it comes to the, the, the point of you being overwhelmed, in my opinion, if you are serious about your craft, you need to hear those low frequencies. And the only way to learn how to properly work with them is to dive into this journey of getting those low frequencies, making sure they're controlled in your room and actually learning to work with them.
Yeah, that's the only way that you'll actually get to the point where you will have full control over, over the music that you're working on. Yeah, so if you are interested in getting a sub, make sure you're remembering these three points. So making, making sure that you actually want one and that your speakers aren't already potentially giving you what you need and you're just setting yourself up incorrectly in the room. Make sure that you're not doing this because you think it will fix any issues because a, a subwoofer just isn't the right tool for the job. And finally, do understand that the sub will only really shine if you get proper low-end control in your room and if you've damped those standing waves because that is the only way for the sub to really do its job. So keep those three points in mind. If you're looking at investing in a sub, make sure you've got those all covered. And then in my opinion, you should totally get one. Subs are great. <laughs> Subs are awesome. <laughs> I love mine and I wouldn't want to do without it. So with that, let's get back to learning to trust your ears and having fun making the music in the studio. I'll see you soon.